And now for part two of my interview with Lucy Danziger, editor-in-chief of Self Magazine. And when you talk about celebrities, are there certain celebrities that you absolutely wouldn't put on the cover? Like someone like a Lindsay Lohan, is that someone who... You know, I, I believe in redemption. I mean, I, I can't say never. I would say if somebody came to me and said, I used to be a badass and now I am really together and I want to help other women be really together. I mean, that was Fergie. When we put Fergie on the cover, we were the first magazine to do it and some of our, um, we, we market test this and some of our readers said, you know, wasn't she a crystal meth addict? And we were like, yeah, but that was a long time ago. And she went home to mom and she got it together and she wears her, um, her piercing in her, in her eyebrow to say to herself, to remind herself she's this new person. And she's extremely open about the fact that she had this patch and it was a bad patch and she got through it and now she is a straight egg, a straight and narrow, a good egg. And I met her once at a fashion show and she was so sweet to my daughter and she was so sweet to me and I was like, I love this woman. She has this essence of goodness. And so uh, we put her on the cover and she sold like hotcakes. Because I think women think if she can come back from that, <laughs> I can forgive myself for a couple of glasses of wine, too many. You know, it's okay. You know, we all have our little <laughs> sins and maybe it's not drugs, maybe it's, you know, sugar or whatever. But there is, there is that f final, you know, feeling of like she got it together. What model has been on your cover and surprised you in that they did not sell well when you thought they would have? You know, there are a couple people who I love that are not great sellers, but I love them anyway. Um, I don't think it's any secret. I would say that Jennifer Garner doesn't sell as well as I think Why she do you should. Think that is? I don't know. Maybe she's so perfect. Women <laughs> envy her. You know, she got the guy and the kids. Beautiful, talented, you know, down to earth. I don't know. I love her. Um, and I'll do her again. I'll put her on the cover 18 times because she's very selfie and she's very real. I don't understand why America is, is either jealous of her or I don't know what, but she's, she's a winner. So Kirstie Alley recently went on Oprah Winfrey to talk about her weight gain, the fact that she had gained this 85 pounds right, right. and how she felt almost guilty about it, that she had let her audience down in a way, is I mm -hmm. think how she put it. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that? And do you think that there's this additional pressure on celebrities in terms of fitness and the scrutiny they get? I think it's so hard. I mean, I lost... 25 to 30 pounds a couple years ago, it's hard. I would say that anybody who's struggled with weight in their life knows how hard it is. And you can't judge. You can never judge anybody else's reasons for eating, reasons for falling off their diet, reasons for having a need. I mean, it could be biological, psychological, emotional, stress, any, you know, a million different things. So I think everyone's heart goes out to somebody who does this in public. And the hard part for her is that she had an endorsement deal, and that becomes even harder because you're setting yourself up as a success right. story, and then the failure is that much more crushing. Um, but, you know, my heart goes out to anyone who struggles with this because it's a human condition to not always be perfect, and that's where we come in. We're here to help. So you lost 25 pounds. Was there mm -hmm. pressure in your industry as the editor of Self where people are saying, wait a minute, you have to be a model as well in a way? You know, if, if people whisper behind my back, they were kind enough never to tell me <laughs> because I was always athletic and I was always active and I never was, you know, what I would call classically overweight. I was just always this big athletic girl. And then um, I decided to cut out sugar and cut down on wine. I still drink, but much less. And so um, I did that because I like triathlons and I was doing triathlons and I wasn't getting faster. I'd buy a nicer bike, and I'd buy, you know, a better, you know, piece of equipment, better wetsuit. I still wasn't getting faster. And I'd train hard, and I wasn't getting faster. And, and my training partner, who had already cut out sugar, said, you know, if you cut out sugar, you might get faster. And it was her gentle way of saying, you know, <laughs> five pounds might help. And I started losing weight really quickly. And what happened was really interesting. It was so easy, because it wasn't really a diet. It was just like, instead of... Everything I ever wanted to eat, because I work out all the time, what if I ate healthily, because I do work out all the time and I'm hungry, I eat plenty, but I just don't eat junk food. So you work out all the time, you run Self Magazine, you have children, how are you able to balance it, and, and how do you balance the demands of being a working mom? That is so hard, and I will say that these are phases. I could not have started doing triathlons until my children were old enough to tie their own shoes, 
you know, my youngest now is 13. So I started doing triathlons when she was about 10 or 9. So, you know, if she wakes up in the morning and I'm not there, you know, she can either read a book or pour herself a bowl of cereal. And, of course, her dad's there. So I have a very supportive spouse. I have children who are amazing, who understand this is one of my passions. And they understand they have passions. You know, she's a track star. My son's a crew jock. They're very proud of me. And it's very sweet that they, they support my athletic endeavors. But, you know, you can't do it all at once. If you have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, cut yourself a break. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> you know, so exactly. It's a phase kind of thing. I mean, I'm writing a book. I couldn't have written a book until I had a little more time in my schedule. So everyone goes through phases, and, and you have to be patient with yourself. You can't try to do everything all at once. So I would say supportive spouse, wonderful children, amazing group of people I work with at the magazine who understand that if I have you know, something going on and I don't get it until 10, you know, they, they, they know that at 10 o'clock we're going to hit the ground running, but I have a busy morning. I'm up at 5 and I'm training and writing and doing all these things before 10. So, so everyone's very understanding. And I have to say that they respect the fact that I have serial passions and, mm -hmm. uh, and you just have to express that. I think women are scared to say what their needs are. And the one thing I would say is, if you need to get to the gym and your spouse is going to play golf, you can say, honey, go enjoy that golf game. When you get back, I'd love to go to the gym. You have to express it. You have to express what you need and, and find a way to make that work. So you think women in general aren't being as adamant and as strong as they need to be to carve out that me time? I think women are, in general, very giving human beings. We believe in helping everyone around us. And um, we have an expression, which is, you know, put the oxygen mask on yourself first, <laughs> because you're, you have to be strong to help others, right? If you let yourself become a human wreck, you're no good to anyone around you. All the people you love, who you're doing the laundry for and cooking dinner for, they don't want to see you get sick. They don't want to see you lose your sense of self. They want to see you be your best self. So, you know, sometimes you have to say to your kids, I need you to clean your own room. Right. I'm going to make dinner, and then we're all going to go out for a walk. And they'll look at you like you're insane. And you keep saying it, and they're going to get it. They're going to get that memo that these are your needs. You have needs, too. And as long as they're reasonably stated and in a reasonable way, everybody's going to be fine. And let's talk for a minute about the economy, because like in all industries, publishing is suffering. How does self stay competitive in this tight economy? Well, you know, it, it's really interesting. The, the more the storms rage outside, the more we realize you can only control what happens right here with you. So we deal with women on a very intimate level about what she's eating and her beauty and her health. All of those areas are still strong. And we have been very, very lucky because we have not suffered the way other places have. And I only say that because, you know, we really feel like we are a port in a storm. And that's a good place to be right now. But I, my heart goes out to others who are in that storm. And I, you know, I wish the economy would turn around because it's better for everyone if we all go to the newsstand and buy magazines. Yeah, all ships rise in a rising tide. Exactly. You can be a very seaworthy ship. And when the tide goes out, you still go down with everybody else. But we are the seaworthy ship. And we're very lucky right now. Now, this whole fascination with celebrities, do you feel pressure to compete with the tabloid magazines? You know, it's interesting. We're not competing with the tabloid magazines. We're a kind of complimentary buy because we don't do gotcha journalism. We really talk to people about what they care about. So, you know, Beyonce was talking about her, her way of getting in shape and being happy and being, you know, her well-being. And I didn't say to her, you know, so... What about that marriage thing? And what about that baby thing? And what I, I just, you know, I let women be who they want to be in our pages and really espouse their message to our readers. And we have six and a half million readers who all want to know that side of Beyonce. So she, they're not really looking for dirt. You know, we're not looking for dirt. That's not the point. The point is to let women connect with each other and kind of get out of the way. Well, Lucy Danziger, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks. I appreciate it.